Special Forces medics, or 18 Deltas, must consistently train to stay current and proficient. When you're an 18 Delta on a team, your full-time job isn't to be the medic. But when it's time for you to be the medic, you're expected to be competent. So it requires a little bit of extra time because that's something that the team isn't going to enforce. The team's not going to tell them, hey, you need to go ahead and read up on this stuff. You know, uh, as an 18 Delta on a team, I spent very little time doing medicine. But the times that I had to do medicine, I had to perform at a high level. It's that expectation of high performance that adds to the pressure of being an instructor at what is arguably the most demanding school in the Army. But pressure aside, it's critical for these Green Berets fresh from the fight to pass on their knowledge to the next generation of Special Forces. A significant number of medics are getting wounded downrange. Um, you know, we go to the scene of where an injury occurs and depending upon how the injury occurred, the enemy might still have that same location targeted in on you at that point in time. So we're putting our lives at risk to go to that patient if they can't come to us. That being said, who's to say I'm not going to be the next victim? So it's, I'm going to be reliant upon the other medics that are there on the scene. And, and so it behooves me to train them up the best that I can. So how do you take an 18 Delta instructor with an already strong sense of personal motivation to teach students to the highest standards possible and make him an even better instructor? Perhaps the answers lie here within the walls of one of the country's premier teaching hospitals. We had the opportunity to go down to the schoolhouse and see how the training was uh, developed and performed and ask the question, is there anything we can do to help? And there were two things that, that, that were really asked of us. One was, could we bring the instructors up to UNC so that they could learn from the professors how we educate trainees? And there was some interest in the burn center because there's a lot of burns in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's the burns, it's the long-term care for, um, you know, it, it's treating a burn, treating an explosion, treating a gunshot wound that somebody did not get evacuated from, or it's a local national that you're doing the wound care on. It's a, it's a perpetual care that's gonna go on for, you know, six weeks or six months. It's that kind of skill that you're able to sharpen. Sometimes you're limited to the experiences that you have on your deployment. I might see a lot of pediatric patients, I might not see any elderly patients. I might see a lot of traumas, I might see no traumas. When I come up here, I've already been assigned to the schoolhouse and I've been instructed as to where my lane is going to be that I'm instructing in. It allows me to focus that one month of time that I have up here, specifically in the categories I'm going to be teaching in. And so it allows me to be that subject matter expert for the brand new students. Reporting from the United States Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School, I'm Army Sergeant Teresa Koble.